right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I do mean over the top beautiful. This unbelievably postcard perfect day here in mid August in paradise here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. We have made it to a Thursday, I think. Maybe August 11th, 2022, somewhere around there. Uh, I am procrastinating having to get to work on this gorgeous day. So anyway, <coughs> I've been enjoying this uh, morning looking over the comments about whether this crusty old doomer ought to go to the bliss mini capital of the world, Auroville, India. And looking at how people are weighing in on this. And it's pretty much even, guys. I, I have to say, it, it's pretty much down the middle. Uh, should I go to Auroville or not? Uh, <laughs> So I haven't done the actual count, but it feels like people are all over the board. And it's really gotten me to thinking about fear. Fear, getting out of your comfort zone, and all of this. How the divide, I think, when I, I'm trying to analyze the divide, and it feels like you know some people are willing to get out of their comfort zone and some people are not and uh we're gonna talk about that i want to before i get into the main comment i want to talk about all of these comments uh which now have completely disappeared off of my computer the every comment on here is gone Anyway, okay, back again. Uh, I'm going to center this on uh, a, a long comment from my buddy WRW, which just came in. But let's hear, let's see, we'll just go down, uh, go down the list of... Uh, so I'm unclear whether WRW thinks I should go or not. Okay, Cynthia says go. Uh, Jeremy Jimenez says go. Uh, here is Tranquil Forest Bird says I don't think Sancho wants to go. It sounds like Mark J is telling me that I should go. Zen Ape don't go. Sandy Westman don't go. James Dean uh, sounds, huh, can't tell whether James, whether you think, I, I think he's telling me don't go. Gray Wolf, do go. Aaron, I'm reading this as do go. Charles Knuckles, he's over there now. He is telling me come on over. Uh, let's see. I can't tell if Gazer is saying go or not. He says go if you like humid heat. Uh, fat boy, sounding like he I should go. I uh, can't tell if finished article. I think finished article is good with going to India. A little uh, divided on Auroville. Uh, Jeffrey Jackson, it sounds like a don't go. Irk one, sounds like a do go. And Colony of Cells, a don't go. Now, Vegematic, I, I, I'm a little unclear what Veg. Uh, <coughs> veg gives me a pro anacon. A pro anacon, so this is according to Veg. The, this is the reasons to go to for a handbun to go to Arval, India. Maybe you should go over there and declare yourself as the anointed one. You could get some of those trust fund hippie girls to follow you around and bathe you in the pure holy water of the Ganges while donating to your new ashram. 
affirmations are merely coincidences. Uh, so I want to talk about that. Uh, okay, con. You may go over there and be considered unclean by those trust fund hippie girls. Your luxury apartment might have sewage backing up into it, and you might get internal parasites from all that delicious food. Sancho could end up being sent to Sri Lanka by mistake and die a lonely death after surviving a few weeks by eating rats. I think you should stay. Hope that helps. Yes. And my comment is that is pretty much the choice as I see it. See it too. So anyway, guys, we have a, uh, a mixed bag on should the crusty old doomer go to the bliss to any capital of the world. But uh, I'm going to, we're going to kind of shift gears in here. This comment that just came in one hour ago from my buddy WRW. I, I've actually stayed at WRW's home. And uh, this guy, WRW, is not a clueless moron, okay? Uh, on any level, this man uh, is not a clueless moron. I think he considers himself a doomer. Brother, do you consider yourself a doomer? But anyway, I consider this man a friend of mine and uh sorry to say it doesn't sound like you'll be joining us at the doomer meetup my brother you can come anytime uh, anyway and so i'm just gonna read his comment and since youtube yanked down my response to his comment so i responded to this comment and youtube whatever read my response to this comment and felt it was so offensive that they ripped down my own comment from my own channel. This happened also over on Collapse Chronicles. At least 50% of my own comments on my own channels get yanked down by the YouTube cop bots. There was not one word, not one word, in my comment uh, on Humpty Dumpty Tribe to WRW that was offensive on any single level. Same with my comment to good old nobody, nobody over there on Collapse Chronicles. Not one word. Uh, they, they, they were G-rated. But, but anyway, uh, I'm just as glad, I think, that they pulled it down because now I get to make a whole ramp. But anyway, we are going to hear from WRW, who, I, as I say, does, does this man think I should go to Auroville, India, or not? Take it away, W. <clears throat> I don't believe in messages from the universe. The universe does not give, about, give a shit about you or me. And I agree 100% with that statement. We will get back to that. Okay. So, what is it that matters? It is not messages from the universe. They have nothing to do with anything. What matters are details. <clears throat> details matter. Okay. $1,528 round trip ticket from Boston to Madurai, India, 28-hour trip and two stops. How to get to the airport? Bus, Dartmouth coach, I have no clue what a Dartmouth coach is, never heard the term in my life. How to get to the airport? How much to get to Auroville from the Indian airport by cab or bus. I would want to make sure I had a room rented for the whole time. This is six months we're talking about. I would want to make sure I had a room rented for the whole time before, before I booked anything else. 
does that include electricity, air conditioning? Is it furnished? Is the bathroom private? How do you get around? Is it walkable to food? How many food options are there? What do you do? What do you do if you want to travel or leave Auroville? How much? Meaning, how much money does it cost to get on a bus in India? <laughs> anyway, guys, and uh, so I think I know WRW well enough to uh, have this rant if uh, anything I'm saying gets ready to offend this man. Uh, my comment started off, I'm trying to remember, it started off spoken like a true doomer. Spoken like a true doomer preparing for the collapse of global industrial civilization and we wonder why the rest of the world hates us. And uh, I can't. And then there was. I can't remember why. I told him a little bit about my travel style, and suggested he read my book *Peruvian Plunge*. For anybody interested in uh, in uh, how to uh, well interested in how I approach traveling in the third world, *Peruvian Plunge*. Uh, was a play on that, you know, on that term, you know, bus plunge. Whenever a bunch of people are killed in some third world mountainous country, they always use the word plunge. Buses, all they do is plunge over third world cliffs. And, and uh, so this is where Peruvian plunge came from was uh, it embodied uh, everything that WRW mentioned. Peruvian plunge is the antithesis of it. The absolute <laughs> antithesis of it. So uh, anyway, you can get my book on, uh, I think you can get it on Barnes & Noble. That is Peruvian Plunge by Hambone Littletail for anybody interested uh, for the 250-page uh, antidote to uh, all of that. But what I what I mentioned uh, in, in, in this uh, in, in this long comment that was yanked down by YouTube. That, that I that I am genuinely surprised I got this comment from from WRW uh, because I did not realize that this man lived in, in, in this fear and in, in, in what is this fear you know this is what I never understood I you know I have traveled around uh, Latin America seven years years uh, all together that I spent traveling around Latin America. All right, I, I have been to more hell holes, good God, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, of course, Costa Rica for three years, Panama, of course, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, and, and even St. Croix uh, w would have to add this in there. Okay, in seven years of traveling around third world countries, never once, never one time did I have a room reserved for anywhere I went. Never happened. Never happened. One time. In, in, in seven years. And this is even years before I ate five grams of psilocybin mushrooms. I, I just don't get it with people. You know, my sister, uh, who I love dearly too, is uh, w would agree with every word. That sounds like my sister 
uh, wrote this when uh, she came down to uh, visit me in Costa Rica when she and her husband came down from Vermont to Costa Rica to visit me. She, when she got there, she had her itinerary in her hand. She had every single night booked what uh, motel uh, they were staying at, what uh, whatever beach they wanted to go to, whatever fucking volcano, whatever. She had a, a point by point two week itinerary in, 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 in Costa Rica. Uh, which my guess is in some ways is similar to India, particularly Auroville, India. My guess has a lot of similarities to a lot of these tourist towns in Costa Rica. And uh, I, I had a great laugh when she presented me her itinerary. I, you know, I was just thinking she and her husband were, were gonna hop in the damn truck and, and, and we were gonna drive off, uh, you know, go down to the beach and, and say, well, uh, darling, uh, what do you think of this place? Uh, but no, that's not how it works, and my sister is, is not, and certainly her husband. I do not consider them living in fear, and what is it about people, and, and, and I might be unfairly uh, targeting my fellow Americans with this comment, uh, why would this man, this grown man, be so terrified uh, of going to fucking India, getting off the airplane, walking out of the airport, and uh, going, okay, let's see where this takes me. I, I don't know if I've mentioned, I'm sure I've mentioned the story at some point where the first time I went to Costa Rica, on one of these package tours that my buddy, you know, where we had every single night, uh, you know, what uh, hotel, what restaurant. I did that game for two weeks, and it was Christmas Eve, and we were all uh, heading back to the, uh, you know, back to the U.S. And I, I was in the airport getting ready to check my bags. Okay, this is my first trip to Latin America, well, outside of Mexico, you, you know what I'm saying, deep into Latin America. It's Christmas Eve, I'm just getting ready to check my bags, and then I decide, what the fuck are you doing, Hambone? Why are you going back to that shithole country? You know, I was in the middle of a divorce, I, I had no home, uh, I had no wife, uh, I, I had plenty of cash in my pocket, I had no job, no wife, uh, no house to go back to. I said, fuck it. So I told my friends, I'm not going back. And they're like, what do you mean you're, you're not going back? You're not coming back to California. And I said, guys, I'm staying here. They looked at me like I had lost my fucking mind. So what I did, not knowing one word of Spanish pretty much, I put my backpack on my back. I walked out of the airport. I'm standing there in the Costa Rican airport with a backpack on on Christmas Eve, having no fucking clue where I was spending the night. And uh, that was December of 1990, okay, and I'm alive to talk about it. And, uh, you know, so we got to get back. Okay, I want to make a comment about the, the negative comments I received from WRW from a uh, little bit from Vegematic and from Colony of Cells about this idea of messages from the universe. And then we're going to talk about kind of the flip side of that, get a little bit of Carlos Castaneda mixed into this. Uh, okay.
Okay, I agree 100% with WRW. The universe does not give a shit about you, about me, anything else. You are nowhere on the fucking universe's attention. That said, I do not categorically reject messages from the universe. Omens and affirmations. Uh, I, I have had yet another Auroville affirmation. Uh, in, in the last 48 hours. Uh, as I say, I had never heard of Auroville, India uh, till one year ago when I said, I am waiting for a message from the universe uh, what I'm supposed to do with myself. The fucking phone rings three minutes later from some guy from Auroville, India. And then I didn't really think about it much till about uh, less than two weeks ago. Uh, I'm starting to think about what the fuck I'm doing with my life. And now three affirmations in addition to the original omen. Auroville, India was never mentioned from November 1st till August 1st. Never crossed my mind. Since August 1st, and I would say probably since August 4th or 5th, I have had three more affirmations from the universe uh, about Auroville, India. Never, never crossed my mind from, from November 1st until August. And, and now I can't go a day w without Auroville, India uh, showing up. So, Vegematic is correct. This is a coincidence. It coincides with me thinking, oh, should I be going to Auroville, India, and having three affirmations. Uh, I do, I, I have enough of a left brain to, to fucking understand that this is a complete coincidence. The universe could give a flying fuck whether I ever go to Auroville, India or not. Okay? But you can understand that and also pay some attention if you have enough of a right brain uh, to open your mind enough to uh, uh, affirmations. And then, uh, so then we go, and the next thing I want to talk about, uh, about my travel plans and, and major decisions in my life is this whole notion, you've heard it before, this little uh, sp spiritual gobbledygook about letting go of the bank and letting the current take you along, meaning taking a Peruvian plunge. It means walk, quitting your hundred and what was my salary in 2000, 2007, quitting my $113,000 job and selling my beautiful four-bedroom, three-bath home uh, on the uh, on the South Austin Greenbelt, walking away from a beautiful home, a successful real estate business, uh, 300 close friends, and all the pussy uh, that I could that I could deal with walking away from all of it and taking a Peruvian plunge, getting on an airplane, flying to Peru, getting off of the airplane in Peru, having no fucking clue where you're going to spend the first night there. And uh, that is what is called letting go of the bank. Uh, letting the universe carry you along. Uh, if, if I lived in fear, I can assure you that, well, I can't assure you, but I pretty much can. WRW is never, ever, it is not going to happen. 
and I would love to be proved wrong, brother. WRW, like 99.9% .9 of people on this planet and 99.999% of Americans is not, is not going to sell his beautiful home, quit his job. Now, of course, WRW has a beautiful wife. Uh, you know, he does have that to consider. Uh, because it would be the end of his marriage, I assure you. WRW is not ever going to take a Peruvian plunge. Okay? It ain't going to happen. Uh, is not going to happen any more than it's going to... And, 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 and brother, I, I, I'm not talking shit about you. I'm saying you are... You are... You know, 99.999% of Americans... Uh, and I and I guess I'm not. You, you know, you're you're talking to someone who chooses to shit in, in a five-gallon bucket of sawdust. I have a fucking flush toilet, a ten-second walk from here, and I choose to shit in a fucking five-gallon bucket of sawdust. All right, do I sound like a, a person uh, who, who's, <laughs> who, you, you, you know, anyway. Um, so it, it, it's just, you just simply need to decide uh, how you're going to live your life. Now, of course, Don Juan, I've talked about this one, and I'm not going to get off again into a futile attempt to explain the teachings of Carlos Castaneda in a, a, you know, in five minutes, but it's the, you know, this whole thing about using your death as your advisor. And so whenever you make a choice, whether it's going to Auroville, India for six months or uh, quitting your $113,000 a year job and, and selling your beautiful home to go climb on a chicken bus uh, in the Andes Mountains to go uh, plunge into the Amazon rainforest, uh, what, whatever, it is, you just ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen here? The worst that could happen. And uh, if the answer is not, well, the worst that could happen is, is that I could fucking die. That I, I mean, assuming you don't want to die, uh, and, and as long as your pendulum, my my friend in uh, Austin calls what she how she de describes it is putting it on her pendulum. Uh, it, it's the same. It's the same notion that she's describing, and and, and letting her pendulum. You know, swing her decision uh, one way or, or the next. So, it's what is the worst that could fucking happen? Now, I admit, as a couple of you pointed out, and even Vegematic, my big concern is I'm not using my death as my advisor, I'm using Sancho's death. Uh, my single biggest concern of them all is the little dog. Uh, am I putting this little dog in danger? Uh, and I need, I do need to be 100% sure that this crazy fucking trip to Auroville, uh, is not going to put this little dog in physical danger. If I get, if my pendulum tells me if using Sancho's death as my advisor tells me that taking Sancho to India is, you know, putting his life in danger, I'm not going to do it. Okay? I, I, am, uh, I don't know. I, I am researching it. It is the number one most important question I'm researching. 
so I'm not that stupid. But other than Sancho, I mean, if, if, if Sancho was not involved with this, uh, the, the biggest thing would probably be that 28-hour flight uh, to get to, uh, to, to get to India, uh, which, which truly does sound horrible. Uh, but th this whole thing about what is so fucking terrifying, you know, about stepping outside of your comfort level, it is called the comfort trap. Uh, and, and I'm really disappointed to see uh, WRW so fucking, so fucking uh, caught up in his comfort trap. But uh, how these people, and, and again, and it's probably more of Americans than, than most people, what is so fucking terrifying, dude? I really want to know. I want to hear from WRW, anybody else who agrees with his comment. Why are you so fucking terrified of just fucking trusting the universe? Is there a chance you are going to end up in some fucking third world hellhole uh, lodging for the night. There's a very good chance of it. I have spent I have spent many uh, a night in third world hellhole uh, motel and hotel rooms. Uh, I talk about several of them in Peruvian Plunge. If I had to pick my favorite, it would probably be in this little shithole town in Honduras. When I was traveling, uh, who was it, with three other people, the four of us, the sun was going down on this little village in Honduras, and we did not want to be on the road. Uh, you don't want to be on the road uh, when the sun goes down in Honduras, so we just look for so we were in this little shithole town i mean this absolute third world hellhole fucking sun going down and, and we're scrambling trying to find a hotel that you should at the place we found absolutely fucking hilarious my it was two the rooms were two dollars a night i that literally had a blood red skull and crossbones over my quote bed uh, that essentially said death to gringos. And we were all fucking uh, dusty from along down the road. And, and we go and we ask uh, where the shower is. Obviously, there was no plumbing. So there's, we asked, uh, I ducha aquí, meaning do you have a shower? And the little girl was saying, there's the shower. And we're going where? And she's pointing to a bucket next to a hole in the ground where, you know, it's an open well with a bucket that you lower down out in the middle of the, quote, courtyard behind the, I mean, there's no curtain around there or anything out in the, <laughs> out, out, out in the middle of the, quote, courtyard uh, of this five-star hotel there's a hole in the ground in a bucket and what you're supposed to do which is exactly what we did we walked out in the middle of the courtyard and you know in in front of uh the family running the hotel and we stripped down butt ass naked we lowered the bucket, it was like a two gallon bucket, and we had all kinds of fun uh, pouring buckets of water over each other, uh, butt ass naked in the middle of this, in the middle of this hotel uh, courtyard. It was, uh, I still have the memory, too. this was 1992, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, I still have the memory of, uh, of of pouring, of standing out there butt-ass naked uh, 
with my friends laughing, uh, pouring buckets of cold water over over us and lathering up with the uh, fucking soapy water uh, running across <laughs> running across the courtyard. And I'm alive to talk about it. I, I, I guess whoever did the blood red death to Gringo's skull and crossbones over the bed uh, gave us a break. Uh, we did get quite the audience uh, and with our with our shower. We were we were a big hit with the uh, with the local children, those crazy naked gringos. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, as I say, I, I have had plenty of uh, of stinky toilets cockroaches unbelievably guys i have never gotten uh crabs i've never once in my entire life through all of the hell holes i've been at i've never gotten crabs and or as far as i know i've never been bitten by a bed bug ever in my entire life with, with all of these places i've stayed at and uh as far as I, maybe I'm just not allergic to bed bug bites. As far as I know, I've never been bitten by a bed bug. Uh, I have taken a shit in some pretty nasty toilets. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking back on it, what, what makes the best story? Uh, is it the is is it the nicely appointed, uh, beautifully furnished, uh, air conditioned uh, room at Lake Panaha Shell with the private bathroom? I'm describing when my sister came to visit uh, me in Guatemala. You can imagine where I was staying, but when my sister got there, uh, and she did treat me to the room. Uh, <laughs> you should see the room that, uh, what was the name of that place? Uh, in, in Lake Panaha Shell, Guatemala. But we did have a fine mushroom trip. My sister and I had a fine mushroom trip on the banks of Lake Panaha Shell in her beautifully appointed uh, hotel room. And I don't know if you could see the little hovel uh, on the other side of the lake that I, that I stayed in. And uh, <laughs> at, uh, the Lake Atitlan, my sister, uh, it's, you know, we stayed in San Marcos, not Panaha Shell for all kinds of reasons. But anyway, guys, uh, I say whether it, it, it's traveling or major life decisions, uh, put it on your fucking pendulum, use death as your advisor, and, and don't be such a fucking little pansy spineless chicken shit that you can't spend one fucking night of your fucking little privileged honky life without a fucking air conditioner, without a fucking flush toilet. Are you really that pathetic? Uh, I mean, I would really be embarrassed. I would really be embarrassed uh, if uh, if I actually had that checklist. That's just me. And, and again, WRW, I'm, uh, I did invite W to spend about a month traveling with me. And uh, I do not think W is going to take up the invitation. And this, of course, uh, m my... You know, my opinion of, uh, of letting go of the bank, uh, letting the universe carry you along, and using death as your advisor is one of the reasons that I have not been laid in five years. Uh, so you will, but just so you understand, if you are a guy, 
particularly if you are a guy who enjoys having sex and you take my advice, you can give up on ever seeing pussy again. It ain't going to happen. Well, I, I mean, I guess, I mean, there's always uh, whores in these third world hell holes. You can always get you a $2 whore. But uh, that is one where I did use death as my advisor. And one of the reasons I have never enjoyed the services of a $2 whore in the third world is because I did use death as my advisor. And uh, that's just a footnote. J just so you guys understand, uh, <laughs> one of the repercussions of taking Don Juan's advice to use death as your advisor and uh, listen to messages from the universe but anyway, the universe is telling me I gotta keep dragging a pile of boards up the side of this mountain. So as much as I am fighting this message from the universe, as much as I would uh, like to lie in my hammock all day on this gorgeous day, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, start uh, hauling boards up the side of a mountain. Uh, Brother Alistair, if you're listening to this and you're still with me, uh, are you coming tomorrow to help me haul shit up this hill or not? Get up there and let death be your advisor. And get out there and let go of the bank and let the universe carry you along while you still can and get out of your fucking comfort trap and step out of your comfort zone and learn to be a fucking human while you still can. My guys. Okay, little dog. Are you using death as your advisor? Are you using chippies as your advisor? Bye, guys.